What if I told you there is a fungus that turns ants into real-life zombies? Like something straight out of The Last of Us. Okay, maybe not exactly like that, but it's close. Imagine going about your day, following the colony, gathering food when suddenly you are no longer in control. Something inside you takes over. You climb, you grip, you can't stop yourself. And then... But what is this fungus really? And should we be worried? Let's find out. Terrifying, isn't it? You want to know what is this awful being that did this to him? The answer? A fungus. Ophiocordyceps. Fungi are everywhere on this planet. Floating around in the air, hiding deep in the soil, and even living inside other creatures. They are not plants, and they are definitely not animals. In fact, they belong to their own weird kingdom of life, completely separate from anything else. Unlike plants, which rely on sunlight to make food, fungi don't care about the sun at all. Instead, they survive by absorbing nutrients from whatever they can find. Rotting leaves, dead trees, or in this case, living creatures. But not all fungi are bad. Some help plants grow by forming underground networks that humans call the wood wide web. Some give them tasty mushrooms, and some even create powerful medicines. But of your cordyceps? That one's different. It's a part of special group called entomopathogens. A complicated way of saying fungi that infect insects. And Earth has over 200 types of them. Each evolved to target a specific bug, like they are following some kind of built-in tracking system. If you could look really close at Ophiocordyceps, you would see it's made up of tiny thread-like structures called hyphae. Think of hyphae like super thin roots, except they don't pull water from the ground. Instead, they sneak inside the host and spread out like an invisible web, slowly taking over. When enough hyphae gathers together, they form something called mycelium, which act as a fungus brain, stomach, and muscles all at once. It's how it grows, eats, and expands. But here is where the things get really bizarre. Fungi like Ophiocordyceps aren't just good at growing, they are also tiny chemical factories. They create special compounds, basically their own survival tools, that can interact with living cells. Some of these compounds are so useful that humans extract them to make medicines. Like antibiotics that fight bacteria. But in the case of Ophiocordyceps, these compounds do something far more sinister. Oh. Now you want to know what exactly is happening to him? And how? Well, that's a good question, but to understand it, we need to go back to the very beginning. Before the infection even starts. Ants are busy little creatures, always on the move, gathering food, building tunnels, and following invisible chemical trails that guide their colony. But deep in the damp, humid jungles, where Ophiocordyceps lurks, Danger is always just a breath away, literally. 
tiny fungal spores float silently through the air, landing on leaves, branches and sometimes on unsuspecting ants. Anthony, our ant, marches alongside his fellow workers, completely unaware that a spore has just landed on him. To him it's nothing, just another speck of dust. But for the fungus, it's the perfect opportunity. The spore latches onto Anthony exoskeleton, the tough outer shell that acts like his armor. But off your cordyceps isn't your average fungus. It has a few tricks. The spore releases special enzymes. Think of them as a tiny chemical scissors that cut through the exoskeleton's defenses. Once inside, the nightmare begins. At first, everything seems normal. Anthony keeps working, carrying bits of leaves with no clue that microscopic fungal threads, hyphae, are quietly spreading inside him. These thin root-like strands weave through his muscles and organs, growing slowly and steadily without him even noticing. No, he doesn't feel it, yet. The fungus is patient. Over the next few days, the fungus grows stronger, building an intricate network inside Anthony, known, as I previously said, mycelium. Slowly, it starts taking over sending sneaky chemical signals that hijack his nervous system. Anthony's behavior begins to change. He wanders off from the colony, moving in strange, unnatural ways. He climbs higher and higher, heading to places ants normally avoid. It's as if he's no longer in control of his own body. And then it happens. The death grip. Anthony bites down on the underside of the leaf and locks his jaws tightly. Normally, ants let go when they die, but not this time. The fungus forces his jaw muscles to clamp down, making sure he stays exactly where it wants him, like a climber gripping a ledge with no way back. <laughs> Why does it make him do that? It's all part of the fungus' plan. Anthony is now in the perfect spot, high above the forest floor, where the temperature and humidity are just right for the next step. Inside Anthony, the fungus is preparing its final move. It grows one last structure, a spore-producing stalk called Stroma, which pushes its way right out of its head. Over the next few days, it grows longer and longer until it bursts. Thousands of new spores are released into the air, floating down to infect the next victim. What is that? That's disturbing, you say? Disturbing, but genius. The fungus doesn't need to move. It turns the ant into its delivery system. And just like that, the cycle begins again. Anthony is gone, but the fungus... It's still out there, silently waiting for its next target. What's up again? Can it infect humans? An excellent question. The answer? Not likely. Humans and ants are completely different. This fungus has spent millions of years evolving to target ants, specific species of ants to be exact. It's like having a key perfectly designed to fit one particular lock. Humans are a completely different type of lock that this key simply can't open. That said, fungi aren't harmless to humans. For example, there is Candida, a fungus that lives on human skin and inside the body. 
most of the time it doesn't cause any trouble until the right condition allow it to grow out of control. Then there's Aspergillus, a fungus that floats through the air. If a human breathes in too many spores, it can lead to serious lung infections. These fungi don't take over behavior like Ophiocordyceps, but they do show that fungi can infect humans under the right circumstances. For Ophiocordyceps to infect humans, it would need to make extreme evolutionary changes. It would have to adapt to an entirely new host, learning how to bypass human immune systems, navigate much more complex brains, and survive in a hotter, drier environment. That level of adaptation is extraordinarily unlikely. It seems humans are safe from this particular fungus. For now. The story of Ophiocordyceps may sound like something out of a horror movie, but it's also a testament to the delicate balance of Earth's biosphere. This fungus, as terrifying as it seems, plays a vital role in controlling ant populations and maintaining the ecosystem's harmony. Without it, the rainforest might look very different. Every part of nature, no matter how strange or unsettling, has its place, even this fungus, with its eerie strategies, contributes to the larger cycle of life. And with that, Anthony's journey comes to an end. But the story of Ophiocordyceps continues widely influencing the world around it. Stay curious, there's so much more to explore.